So this is the deadly Bradley. It's some way between a bread fly and a gurgler. It's a bit of foam tied in a kind of heart-shaped pattern on any hook you like. It suits anything. Size of the fish is up to you. But this is the basic pattern. Two ingredients, yarn and foam. There we go. So there's one ready tied. I'll tie one up and show you the magic to the ingredients. And this is a just amazingly successful fly. So this is a very bog standard size 12 dry fly hook. Nothing exceptional. Um, and what we want is a bit of one mil foam, which is approximately twice the gape of the hook. This one's a little bit longer, a little bit further. And similarly, approximately twice the length of the hook. Bigger is better. Okay. And I've tapered off the top third or so. Okay. And that's where we're going to tie it. We're going to tie it in back here. So first up, we're just going to lay down uh, a base layer of thread, touching turns all the way to the hook bend. Where's it going? There we go. There we go. Start it off. Uh, and then I'm just going to do a little quick spiral wrap back up to uh, about halfway to two thirds of the way up to the hook again, the eye. And this place is where we're going to tie in that little bit of foam. Now, seriously, this fly is going to catch fish. It's going to catch estuary mullet. And this is where I, you know, learned about it after a, a week of a week of fishing for mullet with some pretty rubbish flies. I tied this thing up and never looked back. I was catching 20 or 30 of these things in a couple of hours. So it's very, very successful. Uh, so it's going to get hammered. So a little bit of glue underneath just for durability. Let's let's give this thing a chance. I'm going to trap it down and I'm just going to neatly wind it back one more. And then back in again. I don't know if this part helps. It seems to give a bit of extra body to the fly underneath um, when you look at it. And there we that's the that's that's the, the foam tied in. Okay, now I'm not going to tie that tight. I'm going to push it back so that it has a flap at the back. It has an overhang at the top by at least a couple or three eye widths. And that's where I'm going to tie it in. There's no need to crowd the head. It's plenty of space. It's so two, two very loose turns and then pull it down in a couple more. Now, don't have to commit to it just yet. Let's have a look at how it's shaped up. Okay, so this is going to push back and it's going to produce that beautiful hourglass shape at the back. Right? And it pushes up there. Okay, you can see how it forms. That's just perfect shape, absolutely perfect. So I can give another couple. Push this front back and we're going to build a bit of body behind the head. There we go. We're going to build a big bit of body right behind there. And that's just going to push that foam backwards a little. Doesn't make a big difference. There we go. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So, a little bit cramped. See if I can do this without marking it up. And just put in five turns. 
snip it off. Get rid of an edge to it. And similarly, this foam thankfully doesn't uh, react. There are some foams that don't like super clean. We're just going to give it plenty. Plenty of attention in that head just to keep it all nice and tight. And there we go. Isn't that perfect? That's the perfect, absolutely perfect, deadly broad look. Uh, it's got the perfect shape to it. It's got the perfect head. That shape is just whatever it is about the way that sits on the water. Drives mullet absolutely crazy. There we go. What can you say? Tie one up. It's as simple as. Could not be easier. And if you get onto those estuarine mullet that that everybody goes for, you can see them in the water and they just ignore you. They ignore normal red flies. Uh, this thing they won't. They will go for it and they will chase it and they will follow it and they will take it. The deadly red link.